Well, hey there, it's Alice Vickery, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because I'm not going to sing and I'm not going to add to my two series vlogs. Um, I'm going to read you some of my writing, and um, I know sometimes I put it on Facebook or things like that. But this is um, this is something I entered in a competition into the Young Writers Competition for Rotary, and um, it won the Plymouth round, and it's going on to the um, regional, like the southwest. So I'm 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 pretty pleased with that actually. So um, yeah, I thought I'd put it on YouTube because this is one of my accomplishments, and I like to boast. So. <laughs> That sounds so bad. Anyway, um, there was a theme to it, and the theme was what a difference that made to my life. And you know, as I over exaggerate everything, I could have chosen absolutely anything, like even a piece of cheese would have sufficed. But I did choose love, even though I, I don't know if I've been in love. I just over exaggerated what I could relate to. So I took a situation that I've been through recent, recently, and I. Um, pumped it through the full of imagination so um yeah i hope you like it it's not too long it's it's a page but i promise i'll read it in a very exciting way so you like it okay right people call it puppy love actually adults do the ones that pinch your cheeks imply you've grown a bit more and feel it's appropriate to to deposit half of their saliva supply on your cheek but everyone is susceptible to love, and however much you experience, it is subjective to the person. Just the amount someone rubs your feet can make a person feel barking mad with affection, whereas someone else could feel that to be in love, utter sacrifice of your own beating soul is the only choice. There is a difference between loving someone and being in love. This realisation has compelled me to change, with my love trailing along behind, tail between legs. He was there, doing a little dance move and smiling. Not at me, but I wished he was. <laughs> it didn't take him long to turn around and spot the strange girl in the homemade jacket and billabong hat. I was already engrossed with the dark, curly hair, the chiseled cheekbones, though there were a few other backup boys queuing for my attention. <laughs> But then, oh, those eyes, those sapphire jewels, those royal blues, those enchanting, reflective, turquoise-flecked, icy occult and death-defying eyes that entrap you and drown you and all the time sear you with intrepid vision. Bloody hell. <laughs> it was one of those snort moments, you know, when an unexpected breath leads to pitiful shame. That's when he turned around and smiled at me. Could have turned into a pig. <laughs> so then came the talking, the flirting, and the sharp and persistent idea of something happening. Laughs and smiles were doodled and splattered across the pages of time. A thermal moments blotting too easily. Two feelings arose within me. A passionate loathing of the idea of him and a longing, constantly making me aware too busy for a boy, I told myself. He lives too far away, constantly, uh, insistently came to my mind. My excuses ran amok. They scratched behind my eyes, drummed within my head, and finally marched a mantra from my lips. Yes, the idea of him disgusted me in my self-importance, yet he, he was disgusting, but so much more. He was talented and gruesome, beautiful in the way only a shallow man can achieve. Man, he was a boy! I believed, maybe even for a whole week, I loved him for it. Never underestimate the weaknesses of a teenage girl. We are gorgeous, young and manipulative creatures who loathe ourselves more than anyone else in the entire world. We mould our look on airbrushed imagination, reminding everyone else but ourselves that we are important, we are unique. Ever observed a girl at a party? Seen the outline lips and extra bounce in her hair, 
which took an hour of architectural genius to achieve. Or how she changed her position every few minutes to more suggestively arrange the scraps of clothing ladding her body. It is a battle just to be noticed. So his affection hit me like a big, wet dog. Hideous and barely recognisable with some definite damage done. Yet was I only too willing to towel him down and revel in his doleful eyes. Maybe it was a mistake, but I'm glad I experienced the embodiment of my better qualities in a male. I didn't know I had such an effect on people. <laughs> it was definitely a mistake. <laughs> it's over now. It was always going to end. The longing took over the loathing, and it numbs any regret. What I feel, felt for him, is unfathomable, because that's what love is for me. Feelings too complex to have one simple name. The word is dirty, and looks like it's been dragged through a hedge backwards. Yet I'll be still excited for the next time I look in the mirror and see love, reflected in my eyes. I do have a date next week. <laughs> by Alice Vickery, me, and um, I'm pretty sure that when he sees this he'll know who it's about, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyone who knows me and who sees this will know what who it's about, but you know, say further embarrassment, but you know, I just, I was quite proud of it and you know, I took a subject that I was relatable to, and I hope I read it alright, and I hope you're still here watching because that took a long time to read and my mouth is really dry now. So, um, yes, hope you liked it and, um, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Oh, guys in writing squad, did you see? This is what I did. And, yeah, that was on YouTube. Woohoo. Okay, bye. Toodaloo.